Hello everyone, my name is Loco and welcome to a new StarCraft 2 Heart of the Swarm video. Today I want to go over the Roach Baneling Bust build order and I want to actually explain it to you. Instead of just making a super in-depth video on how exactly to do it, I figured why not just make a video of a game where I actually play the Roach Bane Bust and I will just, you know, talk you through the specifics of the build because honestly, this is so similar to pretty much all the other Darren build orders that are currently out there um, that you really don't need to worry about it. I mean, if you just play a standard Zerg versus Terran build order, in order to execute this Roach Bane Bust, you don't really need to do very much different at all. It's just a, a minor adjustment that you need to be doing. Um, and, um, you know, you, you can be Roach Bane Busting Terrans yourself right now as well. Now, I've been doing this pretty much exclusively for the last, I think it is like three weeks or so. And my Zerg versus Terran win rate right now is about 80%. It's absolutely ridiculous. Um, and obviously, you know, it is a bit cheesy, it is a bit of a, uh, a random thing, because you can obviously lose if your opponent just goes for like a standard siege tank play or whatever like that. Um, but, but it's extremely strong right now, especially because all the Terran players are pretty much opening up with a quick third command center. And the Terran players have a very hard, um, a very hard time scouting these sort of builds. So what this build really focuses on is that it seems to look normal. That's basically the main thing. You want a Terran player to think that everything is in check. You want to be getting a third base up. You want to be getting your Roach one. You want to be getting everything that is normal. You still want to get the four queens. You still want to play a super standard style. However, then all of a sudden you stop making anything, you wait for the Roach Warrior to finish up, and you start making Roaches and Banelings, and that's the main strength. The Terran player, 99% of the time I have found so far, does not realize that you are going for this build order. So as you can see, I have just opened up right there with a super standard hatchery first, and then a spawning pool, something that probably all of you are going to be doing. And in this specific example game, I am going to be opening up Gasless, which is pretty standard right now, uh, but you could obviously also do this with a gas build order. Um, just get your zerking speed out and then pull the drones out of the gas, it doesn't really matter. Now the reason why this is all of a sudden so popular is because Sue actually executed it versus Innovation in the recent GSL finals and a lot of the Korean pro gamers seem to be on the assumption right now that this is really the only proper way you can beat a Terran player because in a macro game Terran players are gonna get really far ahead with the current map pool. Um, and most of the Korean players seem to be, uh, you know, agreeing with that. So, you know, it, it isn't it isn't too surprising that it is so popular right now. Obviously, if you are anywhere below the top of the line grandmasters and the top of the line pro gamers, it's not going to be true. But, you know, you get the idea. So, like I said, you open up with the standard four queen opener. I went for a hat tree first into a spawning pool. Right now, I'm making six zerklings, a little bit much, to be honest. I could have just gotten away with like two or four, uh, but whatever. Um, and I'm gonna also start the four queens as soon as possible. So I'm gonna be making them right when the first and the second queens pop off. I'm just gonna be queuing up two more. Obviously going for another overlord and in between I'm just making as many drones as possible. Now the point where I go for the gas geysers is right around the five minute mark. It doesn't really matter if it's five minutes and ten seconds, it doesn't really matter if it's, uh, you know, four minutes and fifty-five seconds or whatever, but right around the five-ish minute mark is a very good time, and a nice way to actually check yourself is that you should be having right around 36 supply. So right now I'm at 36 supply, I should really be going for the, uh, for the double gas right now, but I'm a little bit late on it. But here we go. Gonna start off the double gas, 5 minutes and 10 seconds, and I am just making more drones. Now the first two queens are right now in the natural, whereas my zerglings are on top of the ramp right there to protect against any kind of reaper shenanigans. And what I'm gonna use the queens for is simply to spread some creep. So, so far, I could be switching into a macro build, I could be switching into any kind of build really, still making only drones. Um, and the terror player is not expecting a thing. Because, you know, there isn't anything special going on right now, it is just a super standard build. Right around the 6 minute mark is when I really want to be getting my third base out. Now my opponent is being a little bit, a little bit greedy right there with his, uh, with his Reapers. He's gonna be denying me access of the third. So I'm gonna plant it down right there at the other base a little bit later than 6 minutes. Uh, but I do manage to get it down eventually. Right now, I start my Zerking speed. I should be starting my Zerking speed pretty much instantly, right around 100 gas or so, having my third base up, but here we go. Starting Zerking speed, and I'm still making drones. So right now is where things get a little bit more interesting. Let me pause the game for a second. So like I said, we're gonna go for a two base Roach Baneling Bust off of four queens, off of two gas guards with a third base building. 
Now this third base is really only going to be here to make the turn think that we are, you know, playing normal, but also to have the potential to switch out of this. So let's say we are, you know, doing the Roach Bane Bust and we realize, oh, things aren't going that well. We can just actually start droning up the third base and tack up to a lair and go for like double upgrades and all that kind of shenanigans. Um, so that's the main reason why the third hatchery is there. We are not going to be making any drones for it until a well later in the game, unless, you know, things aren't going that well with the Roach Bane Bust. Um, and other than that, everything is looking pretty normal. Now what I'm gonna do is right when I hit max saturation, which is just about right now, as you can see I have seven drones in production, um, they are going to be saturated in the natural, I'm going to start a roach warren, and I'm also going to be starting a baneling nest. So that's the main thing. At that point, after I had max saturation in my natural as well in the main, so that's like 18 drones on minerals here, then two in the gas, or two gas guys up with three each, and then like 18 drones on this mineral patches as well. Um, that is when I'm gonna start making, or stop making drones, make a few overlords, and just wait for my Roach Warren and my Bailing Nest to finish up. So let me show you. I have a bunch of production right now, as you can see, seven drones, and there we go. Making the Roach Warren and also making the Bailing Nest. Now, the Bailing Nest is going up, I believe, in the main base, whereas my Roach Warren is going in for the natural, and that is simply because if my opponent is going to scan, he's obviously only going to see one of the buildings, and, you know, seeing a Roach Warren isn't that scary, and seeing a Bailing Nest isn't also that, that weird right now at this point in the game. Um, so I'm just making it look very, very normal. Whatever happens, my opponent is not going to expect a thing. He's just dancing around with his Hellions like he should be. And like I said, I am just saving up right now. I got a couple overroads in production, but as you can see, my minerals and gas are starting to pile up simply because I'm waiting and waiting and waiting to make about eight roaches or so in total. Here we go. Roach one is done. Gonna start nine roaches right there. And now I'm gonna reinforce all of these roaches with Zerklings. The reason why I'm getting Zerklings is because I need to get my, my Banelings out, obviously. Now this is honestly the scariest moment in the game, because my opponent could be running into my natural. It is kind of uncommon, but he could be going for it. As you can see, he has a big amount of Hellions out. Um, but I'm just gonna hit all my Queen Injects, and I'm gonna walk across the map right with my army. Now you always have to think a little bit about how this is gonna go, okay? Because where is my opponent gonna scout my Zerklings? I need to make sure that I don't randomly lose them to versus these uh, versus these Hellions. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna only show him a couple of roaches and then move the rest of my army to the other corner of the map. So right now my opponent knows that I have a bunch of units out, but it doesn't really matter. Um, but, you know, I'm just gonna run to watch his side of the map and I'm gonna morph in the Bailings right there. Keep in mind, I'm still Queen Injecting and I'm still trying to not lose all my Zerklings. Actually not doing that perfectly in this game, but that's alright. So here we go, I'm gonna be morphing a whole bunch of Bailings. Gonna be morphing a whole bunch of them. Um, and I am just walking across the map with all of my units. Now, if I catch a couple of Hellions, that would be great, but there's no reason for me to get too greedy, but I did manage to micro them decently well, where I pick up most of them. Now, one of the big things that you should try and do is actually hotkey your Banelings on a separate hotkey. So, I should really be putting them on hotkey number two, um, or you should just try and micro really well, but my opponent actually decides to leave the front door open. Now, normally you would obviously have to Baneling bust down that, um, that front door, but right now I'm just transferring all of my units <laughs> from my natural to his natural and I'm just trying to keep everything alive um, as far as the bailings go as you can see I am move commanding those whereas I'm actually attack moving with my main army control group and I'm just going to finish off my opponent very very cleanly right here without really that much hassle so Basically what it comes down to is that you play a super standard build without that many shenanigans and without that many trickiness um, And instead of just all of a sudden, you know going for a lair and going for the double upgrades and whatnot You decide to go instead for a whole lot of roaches because you're saving up minerals And it is practically impossible right now for Terran players to scout this So if you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button. If you would like to see more StarCraft 2 content, make sure you let me know right below that like button in the comment section below. And if you want to be up to date as soon as I upload more videos, make sure you hit that subscribe button because, you know, I would really appreciate it. I want to thank you guys all for watching. Have an amazing day. Do not forget to smile. And I will see you in the next video.